And uh, welcome back. It's time for us to go straight into the newspaper headlines for today. We call the segment Off the Press, and uh, we're joined this morning by Mr. Ezekiel Nyaya Talk. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you. Good morning. Morning. Good to be here. Absolutely. Let's start with stories from the Punch newspapers this morning. There's one of them there that I would re re really love your, your views on. Um, the first one there, the major one there says, Afenifere, Pandef, tackle NEF over alleged northerners' killings. Um, it also says, Can one's DSS as agency restates plot on ethno-religious crisis? Uh, APC dismisses alleged plan to field Jonathan in 2023. And also, federal government and World Bank begin process to rebase Nigeria's GDP. Oil price nears $59. OPEC um, optimistic about recovery. We can also see there Sheikh Gumi visits Zamfara bandits in forests. Appeals for peace. That's the one I really would love to talk about. Reps query 5 billion naira import duty waiver to Chinese firm. And one feared dead as hoodlums attack policemen uh, in Lagos. Also, laborers abduct Chinese expatriates, kill police aid in Oshun State. Uh, a few others. Federal government approves Jimovia, Abacha, 18 private universities. It's interesting. Suspected headsmen kill OPC members, searching for Undo abducted farmer. And EFCC grills ex Governor Yari over alleged illegal transactions. Mr. Yan Talk, I, I want us to start with the Sheikh Gumi and his visit to Zamfara bandits in the forest, um, of course, as he appeals for peace. I saw a short video of it yesterday. Um, and the reactions to that story were mostly about how, you know, we're now having conversations and meetings and um, parleying with people who should be in jail for crimes against the Nigerian state. Um, does this in any way you know, come off, you know, to, to you that way? Or do you agree that maybe, you know, we, we should be able to have these discussions every now and then um, in search of peace? Okay, I, I think that um, I would like to take it from the bigger picture, which has to do with national security. Number one is that I think we need to come as a nation to understand what government is all about and the essence of government. The constitution is very clear. Chapter 2, section 14, section, subsection 2b, states emphatically that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. The day we understand that, and then we see the country we live in right now, we look at the level of pervasive insecurity across the nooks and crannies of the country. And we ask ourselves one, two, three fundamental questions. We take two people, the National Security Advisor and the Director of the, the DG um, DSS. These two people, we are in a situation where intelligence is the war that we are facing, intelligence. And these are the heads of Intel. And I ask myself, is it that they are complicit or they are incompetent or they are incapacitated. Are they complicit? Are they incompetent? Are they incapacitated? Why would it come to a point where Nigerians are now the ones to handle security? I want to commend um, the, 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 the Sheikh for taking that bold step. And I want to ask every Nigerian to join and take any step that we can take to rescue our nation. Because it does appear that the government is just leaving us to our fate. As we go through the other papers, we'll be able to look at the different dimensions, the different ramifications, the different aspects of what is going on. All right. But I think that we must come and interrogate this head of our intel, whether they are incompetent, whether they are incap incapacitated, or whether they are complicit. Okay, all right. Please All right, quickly also uh, react to the one there that says uh, APC dismisses alleged plan to field uh, Good Luck Jonathan in 2023. Uh, should, should we be having those type of conversations at all? I, 
I wish I wish that um, it was a major topic uh, topic that we needed to look at and not something we brushed through because there is a fundamental issue we must address. We are saying that in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, this is this is what 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 it prognosticates that in the Federal Republic of Nigeria we do not have a competent you know um, leader that we can have. Look at our sister, the World Trade Organization. Look at the leadership profiling, you know, uh, criteria that they had to go through, all the processes. But in Nigeria, some governors have sat down and they have come to the conclusion that the most competent person to lead this country in times like this, and the question is, what are the times like this, is Mr. Goodluck Jonathan. He's my friend. He's somebody that I hold in high esteem. But I want to ask, if WTO was to profile a CEO for Nigeria, would he be their first choice? And that question is very important. Again, we must answer that question. If WTO or the world bodies were to profile a CEO for Nigeria, who would be our first 11? It's an extremely important question that we must answer before we go too far. All right. All right, let's now turn to the nation newspaper. The big one here says, can Christian Association of Nigeria Islamic Council to DSS go after killers others? Secret police raise the alarm on plans to cause ethno-religious violence. Abductors kill U.S. returnee after ransom. Protesters block highway. Mayhem at Quara APC meeting. Registration begins in Ilori. Governor six AK-47 rifle licensing for Nigerians. Gunmen snatch 20 million Naira, a kitty government, government cash. EFCC quizzes ex-governor Yari for attempting to move 300 billion Naira. Nigerian stocks lose 216 billion Naira in three days. Uh, caretaker leadership in APC, Abnormal, says Akonde. And this one by the WHO saying cancer cases double in 20 years. Um, these are the stories on the front page of The Nation this morning. Yeah. You see, <laughs> where I started from is where we are. Can Islamic Council to DSS go after killers? And that particular, um, we, must, we must really come and interrogate this issue of DSS and the, the National Security Advisor. I, I've taken time to personally look into these people. They are competent people. So I would like to rule out the issue of competence. But are they incapacitated or are they complicit? We really must come to this and put the, the war back to them. While we Nigerians, I like what Khan and the Islamic Council is doing, because on one hand, they want to make it look like a religious war, ethno-religious um, you know, conflict, but that's not it. That's not it. There is a thriving business called banditry, a thriving business. It's such a thriving business that Christians are part of that business. Muslims are part of that business. They are using people that we cannot easily identify with which are people from other countries coming in. But these are the people that are doing the legwork for those that are the masters. Who are the masters? Are you telling me, for goodness sake, that the DSS, the National Security Advisor, they have no intel as to who the masters are? They are Nigerians that are profiting, that are profiteering, that are just wrecking this country out of, it's just like people who do fake drugs. People who do fake drugs put their personal gains and money above the health of the nation. The same thing. Imagine you catch a man and you can get 50 million. You can get 100 million. You can get 20 million. So it is free money and we need to be careful to hit this and nip it in the bud, if we can call it nipping in the bud. Mr. AI Talk, I understand yes. everything you've just said and about you know banditry being, being a business, so to speak. But are these not the same bandits who many others will argue that uh, Sheikh Gumi visited in Zamfara and would say that should they not have ambushed them at that point, swooped in on those bandits and arrested them instead of uh, having appeals for peace? I am telling you that we have not told the full story of what is going on. 
one day a leader is going to come up in this country and will expose the leadership that is sending all of us into this terrible frenzy and, and insecurity. This is a high network stuff from the top. And Mr. President cannot tell me that he will not call the you know, National Security Advisor, the DSSM, EG, and say, I need to know what's going on. If he's clean, if he's clean, he will call them and say, I need an answer 24 hours, and they will give him an answer. All right. All right, so let's uh, turn to another story here on the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper. This one about the EFCC quizzing ex-governor Yari for attempting to move uh, 300 billion naira. Your thoughts on this one, please. I ask, which state, do, you, do we really understand what 300 billion means? Even for a quiet bomb state that gets, I mean, over 20 billion a month, okay? Assuming that you don't pay salaries, assuming that you don't do any, any of those um, 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 projects, how do you get to have 300 billion? It's either EFCC is just shouting foul for where, or there is something extremely fundamental. How can Governor Yari have 300 billion? From where? How? I'm not talking about 3 billion. 3 billion is big enough. What's 300 billion? So all these things that people bandit, it's either they just want to make the nation feel, you know, that they are working on stuff because EFCC has to tell us what 300 billion is all about hmm. and where, where the money came from. They cannot tell me that they cannot trace such money. That's why... <laughs> Let me not go into that. All right. All so right. anyway, the EFCC is saying uh, uh, two new bank accounts was created and the ex-governor was uh, suspected to have tried to move the, the money into the new bank accounts. But still talking about insecurity in the country, this one on the front page of the nation uh, is talking about a governor seeking for AK-47 rifle licensing for Nigerians. Is this where we've really gotten to for us to begin to take up arms for our own security and safety? I'll, I'll tell you this. When push comes to quack, you have to do what is not convenient, what is not conventional. Right now, the bandits, the, the, the killers, all these people need to know that you cannot get into my house and I'm defenseless. And you, you do, you wreak half, half on me. Whatever it takes, whether it needs for us to profile a new different kind of... Um, you know, personal security outfits where Nigerians have capacity to protect themselves. We can no longer be taken for granted the way it's going. It's either the nation state can give us protection or the nation state must allow us to protect ourselves. Whichever way we choose to go, the people must be safe and protected. All right. Let's quickly run uh, through the uh, Nigerian Tribune. Uh, this morning, the big one you can see there says uh, no ethnic group should lord it over uh, the other. And that is uh, from Bajabia Mila. Um, also, uh, Gumi meets bandits in Zamfara Forest. 500 have repented, he says. Crude oil worth $20 billion not accounted for between 20, uh, 2005 and 2012, says uh, reps. And also repeated APC membership registration unnecessary, says Akonde. Uh, 2023, I think we already spoke about this. I'm going to move on from it. FEC approves 20 private universities. And uh, local headsmen hiding identities of criminals, says investors. Over 400 million are investments lost in Igongo. And the uh, price of cassava rose from 20,000 naira to uh, 60,000 naira per ton. We can also see on the Tribune, violence rocks Quara APC stakeholders meeting. And Kaduna to deliver drugs with drones to over 1,000 health facilities. Um, I think uh, these are the ones that we will uh, focus on for now. We've uh, spoken on the, you know, the others. All right, so let's quickly speak on um, the crude oil worth $20 billion not accounted for between 2005 and 2012. Uh, my brother, I want to ask Nigeria one question. I want to ask Nigeria one question, just one question. What is our production capacity, not capacity, what is our production um, figure on a daily basis? And who gave you that figure? This is our mainstay. What, how much crude do we produce daily and how did we arrive at that figure? Mr. President, needs to answer this question and tell Nigerians. 
Because if what I'm hearing is right, we are given figures by bodies. You can't do that. So when you tell me that $200 billion worth of crude... That's just tw $20 billion. $20 billion, sorry. By worth of... Even with a billion. A billion is over 100 billion naira. That's the budget of one, two states, one billion. Not to talk of $20 billion. That's several of our national budget, okay? When you tell me that it's missing, what is missing? Missing means what? We don't even know our production figures daily. What's so difficult in the technology of today, having a little meter at the crude head? You don't need anybody to tell you of every pump. And NNPC and Mr. President having a screen where he has those figures. When they know that Mr. President sees what comes on, out of the ground every day, somebody's got to uh, comment, uh, you know, uh, uh, what answer the question of where they are. Well, but but is, we is it also a good uh, uh, apology? Is it also a good um, reason to look into um, or to question if those funds are still being stolen till now in 2021? Did anything change with um, between 2012 and today? If we have so records, have, or if they claim that 2005 to 2012 has $20 billion missing, um, well, did anything change to stop those funds from being stolen um, to, um, you know, over time till date? Between you and I, I've been able to get into the oil room, so to speak, of certain countries like Kuwait and the rest. Do you understand me? They know what comes from the ground. Nobody tells them. You see, the good thing about technology is that you don't ask questions. The questions answer themselves very, very easily. What is it's like? It's like it's like um, you know, uh, in your house, the the, the 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 borehole, the water that comes at that exit point, you have a meter. That meter is technologically linked to NNPC. Is linked to the office of Mr. President, who is a minister. Fortunately, you know, so we don't need to tell these stories, Miss Missy. If I tell you that as of today, I have been able to get. 20 liters of fuel, and the price of a liter of fuel is 10 naira. I don't need you to tell me that my resource for today is uh, 20 times 10, which is um, 200. It's given, it eliminates this middleman coming to bring this, you no, know, no, PPPRC, this is that, and all. You know, please adopt technology today. If you don't know what to do, ask me. I'll tell you what to do. Free of charge, no consultancy. Let this country start to run on principles that are transparent mm. and accountable. Indeed. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeatok, for your timely analysis, as always. Have a great day. My pleasure. Thanks for speaking with us. Um, you know, and I, I felt it was, you know, it's something important to, to mention. Um, if we say that $20 billion was unaccounted for between 2005 and 2012, fine. Um, what questions need to be asked, you know, who needs to be questioned, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, those missing funds, you know, um, who was fired, who has been sacked, you know, because, you know, they misappropriated funds or their office failed to notice that those funds were missing. And then second, what systems have been put in place to ensure that we don't have uh, more money continue to, you know, just disappear? Uh, between 2012 and the year 2021, what mm. has changed in our systems, in the NNPC, um, in, you know, uh, uh, PPMC, in every, you know, single sector of our petroleum um, industry? I think what Nigeria really needs is a leader that would actually put his foot down or half foot down. It could be a woman, who knows? I mean, if Kamala Harris has done it, who says, I can't, or maybe your sister can't, I mean. Absolutely. Exactly, and the roads are opening up for you know gender equality and for women participation in politics. But the point is, I feel Nigeria needs a politician, a leader, a president that would actually put their foot down and actually stand for what they say they stand for. Because these questions of integrity, corruption, and all of that, they, we do deserve answers. I mean, look at this issue with the Diari story about the whole, about $300 billion that was alleged to have been moved to private accounts. This case would be end up being like the one for Oji or Kalu that might be in, in court for the next decade or so. Well, we hope not. <laughs> we hope not. We can only watch and Stay see. Stay with us. But what we already know are things that happened today in history many years ago, and we come in right to that after this break.